Hi, welcome to Nomi's Crafty Kids. I'm Nomi. Today on Crafty Kids, I'm going to show you how to make this fancy schmancy choker necklace. To make it, I use a basic design from the Rainbow Loom website, one of their intermediate designs that's called the Diamond with Loops Bracelet. And of course, I make it several times longer than it shows on the bracelet pattern. And that way you can make it to fit your own neck or for whatever other use you might want it. You might want to use it as a bracelet, and that's fine. I do use an extended rainbow loom on this, meaning I've hooked two separate looms together to make a loom that's twice as long. You'll see that as we go. Now, on this particular necklace, I've used the beads by Rainbow Fun Charms. These are really, I really like them. They're like the slide beads you get for the bracelets that are popular now. And they have sparkles all the way around them, which I like a lot. In the necklace we're going to make today, I'm going to use three of these beads instead of five, along with one of the butterfly charms, also from Rainbow Fun Charms. So you'll need rubber bands and your rainbow loom and your rainbow loom tool. Beads or charms if you like. These charms will be attached below the basic diamond with loops pattern on an extension that's nothing more than a dragon scale pattern that attaches right on to the diamond with loops as we make it. So that's what we'll be seeing today a different technique for making very unique necklaces, bracelets, whatever you want to do with it. So, let's get started. Now, here's a little closer look at what you'll need to make my fancy schmancy necklace. Okay, on my original version, you'll need five of the slide charms. On the version we're going to make today, you'll only need three slide charms and one focal point charm. Now, I want you to see that this charm has two attaching loops. So rather than just a charm that has a single loop that dangles, this one has two loops, which means it can be attached very securely. And that's the type I'm going to show you how to use on this necklace. Okay, of course, you'll need your rainbow loom tool or a crochet hook. And I'm also going to use the what's called the mini loom that comes with the rainbow loom hook. But I don't use this as a loom. I'm going to use this as a pusher to push the rubber bands down on the loom. And I think you'll find this is very handy. Okay, now we need a lot of rubber bands, of course, because we're going to make this on a double length of the loom, where you can see here I have two rainbow looms attached together. So this is a project you might want to make with a friend. You can put your two looms together and take turns making fancy necklaces. Now, you'll need a whole lot of the rubber bands that make these loops. 44 all together of whatever color your loops are going to be. On this one, they're black. On this one, they're purple. And on the one we make today, we're going to use white. Now, if you can tolerate my moving the camera very gently, Today, I'm going to make the fancy schmancy necklace using the whole rainbow spectrum of rainbow loom rubber bands. 
So it will be a rainbow, rainbow loom necklace. Now, each of these little diamonds, as they're called, well, everything's rolled away. Each of these little diamonds takes four rubber bands. So in the rainbow design, each one of these is going to be a different color. And it takes just a little more than 24, maybe 26, 28 of these diamonds to make the entire necklace, depending on how long you want to make it. So you want to have a supply of eight rubber bands in each color, plus some extra ones to finish off at the ends. So if you're ending with violet and deep red, those are the colors you may want to have 12 or 16 rubber bands instead of just eight. All right, that's plenty of explanation. Let's get on to looming. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time in this tutorial on placing the rubber bands since that is already available on the Rainbow Loom website on, in the How To Instructions section. This is based on the Diamonds with Loops bracelet pattern, as I've said before. And I simply, instead of finishing off on one loom, just continue to repeat the pattern all the way up a double loom. Okay, so we start with two, in this case, pink rubber bands. Now I'm following the instructions from the Rainbow Loom website. And we start with two and then immediately switch to the next color. Okay, and so the actual unit of each color is not so much a diamond as it is an X. And you can see that here we have just these two pinks and then we go here to a full X unit of reds. The next we have is the fuchsia. Now on each placement you begin from the lower left to center, lower right to center, center upper left, center upper right. All right, we'll do that again with the violet, lower left to center, lower right to center, center to upper left, center to upper right. One more time and then you can stop the video and finish up on your own or we'll have the link to the Rainbow Loom instructions that will be helpful as well. Okay, that's lower left to center, lower right to center, center to left, center to right. There you are. Now pause the video and come back when you come all the way up to the end of the loom. When you're ready to begin, this central part of your necklace, you begin at the center of your two rainbow looms, right where they join together. And you begin at this point, at the point of the triangle shape of this dragon scale net. So whatever bead you begin with, you wanna thread a rubber band right through the middle of it of whatever color your dragon scale is going to be. 
you find the very center where your two looms come together, right here. And then working from the center out, um, I'm laying this, positioning this in horizontal position. When you've been placing your bands, this is the left side and that becomes the bottom now. And you place your dragon scale only on this peg bar, the top peg bar. And it's going to build out this way. So when you do your looming, you work from the inside out. This first rubber band that you put on has your first bead already positioned on it. And because it is the first rubber band on a dragon scale, that rubber band needs to be twisted. Now, I like to twist them twice. It just gives a more secure, tighter beginning to the dragon scale. So that's actually my first row. And I'm going to take the second rubber band that's through this bead and just Park it up here on these pegs. It's not going to stay there, but I'm going to park that rubber band up here to keep it out of the way. All right, now we're ready. Second row. Twist in figure eight. Twist in figure eight. I'm going to loop from the inside of the loom outward, holding it this way. That way, our dragon scale net will grow out this way. So we begin looping right here, grabbing the bottom and up, and the bottom band up and over. All right, now these two can go back on and we need one more here, twist it into a figure eight, one more over here, twist it into a figure eight and continue looming up and over. Hold that down, up and over. Grab the bottom, up and over. When I say bottom at this point, I mean only the dragon scale color. You don't want to grab any of these colorful bands below it. Go up and over. Now we're ready for another three. This is our fourth row. We've had two here. This is another one, so we're ready for three again. Now we don't need to twist these. Now I put those on the side because we're ready to add our focal charm. You want to be sure and place the bottom of that charm toward the bottom of the net, and you want to be sure to have right side up, the pretty side up, so that it'll be on the pretty side on your necklace. Okay, now we loop again. And over. That doesn't want to come. Up and over. Be sure you're getting the bottom and not the one that the butterfly is attached to. Okay. Come up and over. And the last. And there we go. Okay. And you can see how your net's going to begin growing down this way. 
Now, I guess we could fast forward, but there's a lot of things that are going to be happening here. And I don't want you to miss them, because this proceeds very quickly. And it's different with almost every row. So, this is a row of two. And bring them up and over. You're alternating between rows of two and rows of three. You can actually move this this way for a minute or two, just to get it out of your way. All right, push down. Now you have another row of three, but we do not connect the butterfly yet because this is a sizable charm. And that will span at least four rows of your dragon scale. So this is a row without any beads or charms on it. Bottom rubber band without catching the colorful bands. Up and over. Up and over. And now a plain row of just two bands right here. That goes really quickly. And there I lost it. All right, grab him, hold that down, up and over. The last two beads, they form a row of themselves. Just these two bands. You can see how that's going to look. this whole net to drop down just a little bit from the rest of the necklace because we want to draw as much attention to the beads and charm as we can. these loops on the left hand side and this one we can fast forward. Your looping for this necklace is really very simple. You actually grab the top band of each color and move it to the forward peg. Do the first bands from the center out, keeping them in order. Let's get this down. There. Now that you've gotten those two done with each color, you'll go from left to center, then right to center followed by center left and center right. And that is pretty much all there is to it. You can run your tool around and you should have the teardrop shape on each one. Push the bands back, left to center, 
right to center. Center left. And I'm not getting these center left ones correctly. We'll have to check into that. And then center right. pushing everything back. There we go. There. That's the way it's supposed to look. And center right. There's our teardrops. Now again, push everything back. Left to center. And right to center. You don't want to ever grab your loop bands. In this case, it's the white bands. I only want to grab the colorful rainbow bands. Now, yeah, grab that up. Did a better job that time. The center to the right. Right. Left to center. and right to center. And center left. And center right. Now we can fast forward until I get up here to the dragon scale. So we have loomed the first part of our fancy schmancy necklace and I've come right up here to where you can see the rubber band pattern changes. So this is the beginning of my dragon scale. But you loom it exactly the same way as you've done so far. These will all be caught when you bring the colorful rubber bands up through it. Now, go to the left first, just like we've been doing. Bring that around. Okay, there's your teardrop. Push everything back, including those dragon scale bands. And bring that to the center. All right. Push everything back on the center peg. Grab the first one from the left. Loosen it up again. Put it up. So bring that over here to the right and just continue all the way up to the very end, pushing back as you go. Okay. So here we are at the very end. I have looped 
all of our bands on both rainbow moons. Here's our dragon scale net with beads and charm. And I've come up, I have one more diamond and the final half diamond to loop. So I'm pushing all of these back. Bring up the bottom from the left to the center. Do the same from the right to the center. And now carefully getting all those aside, center to the left, and center to the right. These are our final two bands that we're looping at the very end, from left to center and from right to center. Now, we come here to the end and we do very much the same as we do on any of our bracelets, but I'm going to use two bands instead of just one because I want it to be quite strong because this will get a lot of use since I'm going to be opening and closing this catch. So I'm going to make two chains. Actually, I'm going to make a chain of about six or seven links, maybe seven links, and each link is a double rubber band. And then I'll come back to this second one here and make a slip knot, forming a nice tight loop that will be serve as the button or the end for the catch. Now that's not quite ready yet. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five. Let's do two more. There's six, and here's seven. Through those. There we go. Now I'm going to come right back here to the second one, the second link. Try to get some light on this so you can see what I'm doing. Grab the other end of that band and pull it through the link and then through itself to make a slip knot. And the way we secure this slip knot so it doesn't come loose, open it up and wrap it around that end. And there you go. That's a nice little ball that will slip through a loop that we're going to put on the other end. Now you'll see on my black and pink one I got a little bit carried away making a great big ball. It doesn't have to be that large. This will work just fine. Okay, now I'm going to go back down to this end. Okay, here we are at the beginning. I'm going to grab two and bring it right through there. And now I'm going to make a chain. And this time, instead of making a ball, I want to make a loop. So I think it's going to be best that I use single bands instead of double ones. Otherwise, we won't be able to tell the difference between the loop and the ball. Right. 
And now, at long last, we're ready to pull it off the loom. I always feel like holding my breath here for fear that I've missed something. And there we are, our finished rainbow fancy schmancy necklace by Noni's Crafty Kids with the clasp and rainbow fun charms right in the center. Just about as nice as my pink, red, and black fancy schmancy necklace. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. If you've liked it, please click like down at the bottom of the screen and subscribe to our channel and we'll see you next time on Noni's Crafty Kids. So that's actually my first row. And I'm going to take the second rubber band that's through this bead and just park it up here on these pegs. It's not going to stay there, but I'm going to park that rubber band up here to keep it out of the way. All right, now we're ready. Second row, twist in figure eight, twist in a figure eight, and I'm going to loop from the inside of the loom outward, holding it this way. That way our dragon scale net will grow out this way. So we begin looping right here, grabbing the bottom and up, and the bottom band up and over. All right. Now, these two can go back on, and we need one more here, twist it into a figure eight. One more over here, twist it into a figure eight. And continue looming up and over. Hold that down, up and over. Grab the bottom, up and over. When I say bottom at this point, I mean only the dragon scale color. You don't want to grab any of these colorful bands below it. Go up and over. Now we're ready for another three. This is our fourth row. We've had two here. This is another one. So we're ready for three again. Now we don't need to twist these. Now I put those on the side because we're ready to add our focal charm. You want to be sure and place the bottom of that charm toward the bottom of the net and you want to be sure to have right side up, the pretty side up, so that It'll be on the pretty side on your necklace. Okay, now we loop again. Up and over. That doesn't want to come. Up and over. Be sure you're getting the bottom and not the one that the butterfly is attached to. 
Okay. Come up and over. And the last. And there we go. Okay. And you can see how your net's going to begin growing down this way. Now, I wish we could fast forward, but there's a lot of things that are going to be happening here. And I don't want you to miss them. Because this proceeds very quickly. And it's different with almost every row. This is a row of two. And bring them up and over. You're alternating between rows of two and rows of three. You can actually move this this way for a minute or two just to get it out of your way. All right, push down. Now you have another row of three, but we do not connect the butterfly yet because this is a sizable charm. And that will span at least four rows of your dragon scale. So this is a row without any beads or charms on it. That bottom rubber band without catching the colorful bands. Up and over. Two bands right here. That goes really quickly. Grab the bottom up and over. This could be our little chant in there. Just fine. What's up? Uh huh. Sounds good. <laughs> oh, you know, I just resent that so much. Yeah. Well, we're going to start demanding equal time for Eddie. So, <laughs> yeah, I know. Just don't even want to think about that. <laughs> yeah, when do you want to bring him over? Okay. You've got beer in battle, don't you? Mm-hmm. But um, you do need to call because I may make a trip with um, with Joni down to Costco. We've been trying to get down to Costco. We went on Monday and don't you know they were closed for Memorial Day? Okay, it will be in Joni's car. Does he have problems in the car still? Okay, good. All righty. Okay, well... Um, we're usually spur of the moment because we, we have to go when I'm feeling well enough and she's feeling well enough, so. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh-huh. Yeah, <laughs> can't take Sergey through Costco. Okay. <laughs> Do they get upset with you having them at Costco? Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh huh. Oh, that's bad. I'm really surprised. Oh my God. 
Yeah, that's true. That's true. I even got challenged somebody at Costco one time wanting to see my my certificate, and I had to say there is no such thing. Apparently, they had some boss come in and tell the staff that service dogs are supposed to have a certificate. So, yep. Yep, therapy dogs, yeah. Yep, but that, that was a couple of years ago, and they haven't given me any hassle since. Besides, if you met us there, you could lift things for us. <laughs> okay, well, but that's unknown. Whether Jenny gets sick, she tends to get sick suddenly, so we'll see. Okay, they're a friend that's developing that website. It looks like she's put a lot of work into it. Or was it was the the structure there and she somebody gave it to her with the structure already set up? Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 